This is the Physics Science Paper 1 of ICAC Board Examination of Class 10. The paper finished earlier on 17th of March and I have already solved Section A. I have posted the solutions and the answer key of Section A. Now we are coming to Section B of this which is also for 40 marks. So Section A and Section B they will be 40 marks and 40 marks each. Let us look at our Section B. This is our section B of 40 marks. Remember that here you will have from question 4 to question number 9. That is 6 questions from which we have to solve any 4. Let us look at our question number 4. First subpart, the diagram below shows the ray OP. Can you see this ray OP traveling through an equilateral prism of a certain material? Calculate the value of I2 that is this one here. If the angle of deviation is given as 43 degrees and what is ray QS called? So what is this ray? To begin with equilateral prism means all angles will be 60 degrees and this is the vertical angle A of the prism which is opposite to the base. So we know the value of A. This is given as value of I. An angle of deviation is going to be somewhere here. This is your delta. So you are going to say your angle A is equal to 60 degrees. Angle I is equal to 65 degrees. Delta is equal to 43 degrees. And you have to find I2 equal to how much. Now this angle of incidence is called as I1 here. So this is your I1. And our formula is... A plus delta is equal to I1 plus I2. So let us substitute. We will have therefore 60 degrees plus 43 degrees will be equal to 65 degrees plus I2. So our I2 will be equal to this is 103 degrees minus 65 degrees. And our answer is 38 degrees. And that is our answer. What is ray QS called? Ray QS is the emergent ray. Question for second subpart. Let us look at it. Copy the diagram given below and complete the path of the light ray PQ which is incident at 90 degrees here as it emerges out of the prism by marking necessary angles and the critical angle of the class is given as 42 degrees. Our PQ ray is incident at 90 degrees. Of course, you will have to draw this diagram on your paper and draw this ray. But I'll just use this and I'll tell you what it is to be completed as. So we'll see this. The ray PQ is going to come undeviated here and it will strike BC surface. At BC, it is going from denser medium that is glass to air. So we have to check the angle of incidence. For that we need the normal. So we will show this normal and the normal has to be shown as dotted line. So let us show it as dotted line and then we are going to look at the angle of incidence here. Now if this triangle has this as 60 and this one will be 90 degrees, we show the arrow here. So this angle over here will be 30 degrees. So this angle over here becomes 60 degrees. Now this is the angle of incidence in the denser medium, but it is greater than 42 degrees, correct? So therefore here total internal reflection will happen and the ray will go this way. How much will be this angle over here? So this angle also will be angle of reflection now because total internal reflection has taken place because angle of incidence is greater than 42 degrees. So how much will this also be? It will be 60 degrees, correct? Now if this is 60 degrees, then this is 90 here. So this will be 30 degrees and in this triangle, what is going to happen? This will be 90 degrees and so the angle of incidence will be zero here and so the ray will go undeviated like so. So let us show that. You should show this at one go like so. 
okay now we need to write the necessary angles so this is going to be 60 degrees that is this much over here and this over here will be 30 degrees why it will be 30 degrees because this is 90 degrees this is going to be 90 degrees because 60 30 give you 90 so balance this angle will be 90 so this angle is incident normally and it will go undeviated okay so we have marked the necessary angles also and total internal reflection has taken place let us look at the third sub part of question 4 the diagram below shows two parallel rays a which is orange and b which is blue incident from air on glass air bump copy and complete the parts of rays a and b how do the speeds of rays differ in the glass and are the two refracted rays in glass parallel and give reason so we got to draw this diagram on the paper and because we have to complete the path of the rays we will need the normals also remember each one of them is having different color which means different wavelength so keep this wave cure in front of you now you know that violet has 4000 angstrom as the wavelength and red has 8000 angstrom as the wavelength so you will see that the lambda that is wavelength increases this way and so this way the refractive index is going to decrease so we'll write over here this is mu minimum and here it will be mu maximum which are the two rays over here orange and blue so we have orange here and blue here so what are we going to say about orange and blue your orange mu is going to be this side so that will be minimum so less than the mu of blue so if orange has less refractive index than blue then orange is going to get refracted less and blue is going to get refracted more so orange is getting refracted less and blue is getting refracted more so let us see the path so show the arrows here now you will see blue is refracted more orange is refracted less and now do you think that they will have the same speed here no because the wavelengths are different okay so we complete the part of the rays a and b so a will be here i'll call this as a dash b will be here i'll call this as b dash how do the speeds of these rays differ in glass b part we will say that the wavelength of orange is greater than wavelength of blue and so the speed of orange is going to be greater than the speed of blue so we say therefore the speed of orange is more than speed of blue in glass are the two refracted rays in glass parallel no because this is deviated through less angle and this has deviated through more angle so what would be right here so our answer is no they are not parallel in glass reason orange ray was refracted less than blue ray and then you can write over there that lambda of orange is greater than wavelength of blue we now come to question number five part one a convex lens of focal length 10 centimeter is placed at a distance of 60 centimeters from the screen so we have the lens and the screen what is this screen for for the image correct so the distance between the lens and the screen becomes the image distance which is v is given how far from the lens should the object be placed means the object distance which is u should be how much so as to obtain a real image on the screen as i said real image will be obtained on the screen so the distance of the screen from the lens is going to be v so we have the focal length of the lens given image distance is given and we have to find the object distance for the solution we write the steps like this we write the lens formula everyone knows 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon v minus 1 upon u we substitute the value of f as 10 and this is positive because it's a convex lens 
1 upon v means 1 upon 60. This is going to be positive because remember this is the lens. Your image is here so your v is going to be positive. u is going to be this way. It's going to be negative. So we write over here 1 upon 60. So in the next step we will take this that side. So 1 upon u comes this side. It becomes positive and 1 upon 60 and this comes that side so minus 1 upon 10 and we take the LCM and we get minus 1 upon 12 as 1 upon u so therefore we say u is equal to minus 12 minus 12 means if this is the lens it is kept here in front of the lens so the object should be 12 centimeters in front of the lens and that is our answer let us come to question 5 second a a coin kept inside the water of mu4 upon 3 when viewed from air in a vertical direction appears to be raised by 3 millimeter. So 3 millimeter is nothing but the shift. Find the depth of the coin in the water. So the depth is the actual depth means they are asking us to find the real depth. What is the formula connecting refractive index and the real depth? You know that refractive index is equal to real depth upon apparent depth. Now I know we have a formula for the shift also but that can be a little confusing so we'll just leave it that way. I'm coming to part B also how is critical angle related to the refractive index of medium and we will look at the solutions. For A part we write mu of water that is refractive index is 4 upon 3 shift is given as 3 mm and depth of the water that is depth of the coin that is real depth is how much now diagrammatic representation is important so that we don't write anything wrong or we don't make silly mistakes okay so if this is the real depth so this is the coin and it is shifted by this much how much three millimeters so if we say that let the real depth be x millimeter then the apparent depth is what we will perceive that apparent depth is going to be x minus 3. Now once we know this use the formula mu is equal to real depth upon apparent depth 4 upon 3 is equal to x upon x minus 3 cross multiply you will get x as 12 mm and the depth will be 1.2 centimeter or 0.12 meter if possible write in SI unit but both answers you should be able to get the marks for. Okay let's come to B part. 5 second part B is how is critical angle related to the refractive index. Our formula says mu is equal to 1 upon sine of the critical angle which means if sine is increasing then critical angle also is increasing which means that our mu is inversely proportional to the critical angle correct so we write that the critical angle will decrease with increase in refractive index can you see this okay and that is our answer we come to question 5 third part again has a and b infrared radiations are used in warfare explain the reason why and B part is given with the ray of light is incident at 45 degrees over here of an equilateral prism in the diagram below. Name the phenomenon exhibited by the ray of light when it enters the prism and when it leaves the prism. When it is emerging, you will see that these two rays are getting separated. Can you see that? Whereas at this surface, it is going to split into its component color. So top will be red and bottom will be violet and in between you will get the other colors. State the cause of the above phenomenon mentioned by you. So we know that at this surface there is dispersion taking place which is the splitting and here we are having only refraction taking place in the second surface. So we write the answers for infrared radiations. Why are they used in the warfare? They have long wavelength therefore they are less scattered and therefore they can penetrate through long distances even in fog and also they can be used at night ordinary light cannot do that that is why infrared radiations will be used for warfare for the b part again if you look at the diagram we had the ray 
which split here and then it got separated. So at the first surface as it entered, it undergoes dispersion and as it leaves, it is going to undergo refraction. And in the second part, they ask the reason for that. So why is the separation of colors happening? Because each color of white light has different wavelengths. So they will bend or get refracted through different angles. And that is where they'll be bent differently and they will be separating each color. That is the dispersion. But as it leaves, each color is further separated from each other due to refraction on the second surface. Question number six, first part. Now remember, you are expected to solve any four of these six questions. So far, we finished question number four and five, which are two questions from section B. Now question number six, let us see if you have attempted how it should have been written. The block and tackle system of police has velocity ratio 4. A. Draw the label diagram of the system indicating clearly the direction of load and effort. And then B part, what is the value of mechanical advantage of the given pulley system if it is an ideal pulley system. Now ideal pulley system means efficiency is going to be 100% which means our mechanical advantage is going to be equal to velocity ratio. Let us see how we present our answer. So we write velocity ratio is 4. So the number of pulleys also will be 4. Number of pulleys in the upper block and the lower block will be 2 and 2. And we show the rigid surface to which we will have the upper block with 2 pulleys and the lower block with 2 pulleys. And we attach the string here and we pass it this way so that the effort is vertically downwards. We write this is effort and to this lower end we are attaching the load from the center of gravity. You have to show arrow downwards which is the load and then we have the tension in each segment of the string. Okay, so that will give us 40s over here. The load will be 40, effort will be 1t, mechanical advantage will be load upon effort which is 4t upon t which is 4. Let us see how we write the second part. We say because it's an ideal pulley, ma and vr they are equal, equal to number of pulleys which is 4. Now I know that even if you write like this, they could give you marks but I would prefer you to write that load is equal to, because of these it is equal to 4t, effort is 1t. So MA is equal to load upon effort, which is 40 upon T. TT gets cancelled and you have 4 as the answer. Our question 6 second part was the one which caused a lot of confusion in many students. They tell you that it's a meter scale weighing 50 GF can be balanced at 40 centimeter mark without any weight suspended on it which means 40 centimeter must be the center of gravity of the ruler. Now, if this ruler is cut at its center, then state which part from here to here, 0 to 50, or from 50 to 100 is going to weigh more than 25 GF. Isn't 25 GF half of this? Ideally, if it was the uniform meter ruler, this one should weigh 25 GF and this one should weigh 25 GF. But that is if the center of gravity is 50. Correct? But the center of gravity is here. That means there is more weight here. Correct? And therefore, 0 to 50 is going to be weighing more than the other. What minimum weight placed on this meter scale can balance this ruler when it is pivoted at the center. Now they are saying that you know that the center of gravity is here, but now they are pivoting here at the center. Then this is going to show you anti-clockwise moment. So you will have to have minimum weight at the maximum length from the pivot. So this is where you will have to apply that force. Let's see how we are going to present our answer. So to begin with, to understand, I have drawn this. 
as I told you it is pivoted at 40 cm so the anti-clockwise and the clockwise moments are equal which means the weight of this part and weight of this part they are equal and therefore the ruler is going to be balanced we know that the weight of the ruler is 50 gf and the center of gravity is not 50 centimeter it is 40 centimeters now they are going to cut this ruler so this part is cut so obviously this part is going to be more heavy yeah so the meter rule is cut into two halves so 0 cm to 50 cm part is heavier or you can say weighs more. What do I write over there? Since 0 cm to 40 cm part balances 40 cm to 100 cm part of the ruler. Now let us come to B. We will show the diagram once again because it's the same meter ruler. Now they were supposed to have cut it but they didn't, right? If it was cut, they asked. So meter ruler will be still from 0 cm to 100 cm, yes. It is now pivoted at its midpoint means 50 cm. Now you know this 40 cm, this is the center of gravity. So from here, the mass of the ruler will be acting downwards so the force at 40 centimeter will be mgf and this mgf is going to be how much it is 50 gf how much is the minimum force let us say this is w2 as we call this w1 and from here to here will be l1 so i'm writing this separately it is 50 minus 40 which is 10 centimeter and l2 will be from here to here that is 100 minus 50 that is 50 centimeter and since it is balancing we write this statement at equilibrium according to what the principle of moments sum of clockwise moments is equal to sum of anti-clockwise moments now I written w1 l1 equal to w2 l2 i should have actually written anti-clockwise here and clockwise here but doesn't matter you write it properly so this will be mgf multiplied by 10 centimeters is l1 see here and w2 into l2 that is 50 here now we substitute for m as 50 gf here so w2 will be equal to this comes here this side so 50 into 100 upon 50 can you see that and then we have 10 remaining here so 10 gf what is this 10 gf this is the minimum weight at 100 centimeter mark and that is going to be our w2 this is our answer this was a little tricky yes but i think if you had a little time to think about it you would be able to do this we come to question six third part a car of mass 120 kg moving at a speed of 18 kmph and it accelerates to attain the speed of 54 kmph in 5 seconds. This is your initial velocity, this is your final velocity and this is kmph so definitely we have to first convert into meter per second. This also will be converted into meter per second, multiply this by 5 upon 18, 5 meter per second, this is going to be uh, 18 threes. So it will be 15 uh, meter per second in 5 seconds work done by the engine now work done is equal to actually you can use the formula f into s but since they give you two velocities it's better to use the work energy theorem and then the power of engine will be this work done upon time all right let's look at the solution so mass is written and initial velocity final velocity like how we saw earlier and time is five seconds so by work energy theorem means work done by the engine is equal to the increase in kinetic energy so final kinetic energy is more so half mv square minus half mu square and then we take out common this m and substitute and we get this answer 60 into 200 6 to 12 and these three zeros 12,000 joules power of the engine will be work upon time this upon 5 seconds and that will give us 5 2s, 5 4s and 0, 0. So that will be 2400 watts and that is our answer. This was simple enough. We come to question number 7. First part A. Which characteristic 
of sound is affected due to the larger surface of the school bell and here it will be loudness b calculate the distance covered by the ultrasonic wave having velocity of 1.5 kilometers per second in 14 seconds when it was received after reflection by the receiver of the sonar which means the wave was emitted and was reflected so this distance plus this distance that is your total distance covered by the ultrasonic wave so we write our answers like so loudness and for b total distance is how much initial velocity is given as 1.5 kilometer per second now we have to convert it into si unit that is 1500 meter per second and time was given as 14 seconds the wave was reflected so our v will be equal to d upon t but it will be total distance which is the emitted distance when it was emitted and then when it was reflected back all right so v is equal to 1500 equal to s upon 14 so s will be 1500 into 14 meters so total distance was this into this 21,000 meters or 21 kilometers we come to the second part of question 7 complete the following nuclear changes that is this is to be completed and name the nuclear radiation which has the highest ionizing power let's look at the answers so we copy this as it is now q will become because helium is emitted from here 4 will be subtracted from 238 to give you 234 that's the mass number of the new element and this 92 is going to lose two particles and it will become 90 so this is how we write and then this again is becoming r with a beta particle so 234 will remain 234 because beta particle was emitted beta particle increases the atomic number by one so 90 becomes 91 and that is your answer then the b part alpha radiations have the highest ionizing power let us look at the third sub part of question 7 we are able to see the tv channels clearly when tv is on auto tuning which phenomenon led to clear visibility of the channels due to auto tuning now this phenomenon is resonance define the above phenomenon don't we know the definition of resonance by heart then give one more example of this phenomenon so let's see how we write it down here it is it was resonance as the phenomenon and then the definition you have to take it from any text you have to know this by heart so i hope you have written it well and c is tuning the radio station and this was the most easy part of it because if the tv station can be tuned even radio station the same thing will happen the frequencies have to be equal of the external signal and the electronic components of the radio all right so that finishes our question number seven let us come to question number eight and by now actually we have finished four questions in section b but if you have attempted question eight or nine then let's look at these as well number one a define specific resistance so this is again a definition you have to know this by heart b what happens to the specific resistance of a conductor if its length is double now whether the length is double or tripled or whatever specific resistance is for the unit length and unit area of cross section it will not matter it will remain the same name a substance whose specific resistance remains almost unchanged with increasing temperature now let us see how we write it so we write the specific resistance the definition it is there in all the books and you should know it by heart is the resistance of unit length and unit area of cross section and b what happens when the wire is doubled the specific resistance remains the same as we discussed and the one which will have a negligible change in specific resistance with temperature will be constant okay let us look at the next question question 8 part 2 a which nuclear radiation will travel undeviated in the electric field is the gamma radiation b 
how can one stop the radiations escaping from nuclear reactor in the nuclear power plant this will be in the safety precautions of course the nuclear reactor is going to be shielded with walls of lead and iron so that the radiations do not escape name one internal source of background radiations you can write carbon let's look at the answers so we written like so then b can you see this exactly the same as we said and here you can write the background radiation inside our body is carbon 14 okay is the a good example to write for this answer let us look at 8c find the value of i that is current drawn from the cell and you can see the diagram over here given calculate the current i and calculate the terminal voltage so let us draw the diagram so i have drawn this diagram so you will see this is positive so the current is going through this path and now it is divided into two paths this path has only 30 ohm and this path has 15 plus 15 which means 30 ohms so we write that first that this 15 here and this 15 here these two are in series so i'll call them as rs and i'll add them to get 30 ohms so rs is now 30 ohms and this 30 and this 30 they are in two branches meeting together and then completing the circuit like so so you will have this one is going to be the resistance in parallel so we use the formula 1 upon rp is equal to 1 upon 30 plus 1 upon rs because these two yes in parallel so now it comes out to be 1 upon 15 so this rp is reciprocal of this means it is 15 ohm so external resistance is this internal resistance is this so by ohm's law i will be equal to v upon r but we will write emf upon external resistance plus internal resistance so 3.4 is the value of e this one and big r is 15 small r is this 2 so that will be 3.4 upon 17 17 to 34 so point 0.2 ampere that's our first part now when they ask you terminal voltage best way to use this formula e minus v is equal to small v small v is equal to big i into r by ohm's law so we will substitute e as 3.4 minus v is equal to i r we have already found out i so i will be 0.2 multiplied by r is this 2 yes so we will have this as 0.4 which will go that side and this v will come this side so 3.4 minus 0.4 that will give us v which is the terminal voltage it will be 3 volt and that is our answer b now we come to the last question if you have written this in your choice questions let us quickly look at the first part calculate total amount of heat energy required to melt 200 grams of ice at 0 degree c to water at 100 degree c when specific latent heat of ice is given as 336 joule per gram and specific heat capacity of water is given as 4.2 joule per gram per degree C. Let us look at the solution. The first thing you should do is to draw the schematic diagram. Ice at 0 becomes water at 0 and then it becomes water at 100. So it will require some heat here that is Q1 and some heat here that is q2 we have written the data given now q1 is the heat to melt this ice to become water at zero degree c so it will use the specific latent heat of fusion so we write the formula substitute and we get how much is that heat our q2 is water at zero is becoming water at 100 it is showing the rise in temperature our formula is going to be mc delta t for q2 and then we substitute and then we will see this 4.2 we'll use this 0 42 so it is 420 so three zeros and 42 into 284 okay so that is 84,000 joules 
total heat energy is going to be q1 plus q2 add these two and write the answer so this is our answer for the first part was that easy let us look at the second sub part state the principle of calorimetry you know at equilibrium the heat lost by the hot body is equal to heat gained by the cold body name the material used for the calorimeter is thin sheet of copper write one characteristic property of this material chosen for making the calorimeter it has a low specific heat capacity question 9 third sub part the diagram below shows the cardboard on which iron filings are kept and a wire bent in the form of a loop is seen passing through the cardboard when the current flows through it iron filings arrange themselves as shown below now this is iron filings they are showing this way this is anti-clockwise magnetic field and this is going to be this way means it is clockwise magnetic field now if you use your right hand thumb rule we'll have if the current is upward direction so the field will be anti-clockwise for upward direction so we will have here the current coming up from here which means the current is moving this way this way this way that means this must be the positive terminal of the cell and the current is entering from here so it is going to be with your thumb down of your right hand you will see clockwise magnetic field so this is going to now enter it this way so this is going to be the small line state the polarity of the battery at a and b a will be positive terminal and b will be the negative terminal state the effect on magnetic field if an iron rod is held along the axis of the coil so if there is an iron rod like this which is held we are giving it a core of soft iron this soft iron is going to intensify means strengthen the magnetic field so the magnetic field is going to be stronger state one way to change the polarity of the coil the polarity of the coil will be reversed by reversing the terminals of the battery and one way to decrease the strength of the magnetic field around the coil will be decrease the number of turns of the coil let us see how we write it so the principle of calorimetry i already told you the material of the calorimeter was copper the characteristic for this copper because it is it is to have low specific heat capacity then we came to that diagram a was positive b was negative as i discussed with you and magnetic field will be increasing or strengthened if there is an iron core how to reverse the polarity of the coil reverse the terminals and how do we decrease the magnetic field is by decreasing the number of turns okay so we have finished all the questions this was the last question of our physics icsc board paper hope you have solved all the questions properly some questions were tricky no doubt about that but if you had a little more time you would have been able to solve it properly accurately but still let us hope to get full marks that is 80 on 80 and do write it down how you found the solution of this was it useful or no write it in the comment box at the same time you will now be able to say whether you are getting 80 on 80 or no now icsc exam is nearly finishing so all the best for all your remaining papers in the meantime stay healthy and do your best for your examinations okay bye